especially now when the results came and now we were just trying to think the way forward because I was like next year we have um, last, year, last year was Commonwealth and all African games so in my mind and in my heart I was like I'm just doing this by faith so if I wake up and go for training I'll be like um, I'm doing this because maybe it's going to end in the next two months in the next so I've been physically I've been training the whole season like it's a normal season but mentally I would say it's challenging yeah. it's challenging because you're not seeing the end goal Friends, I'm Slali and welcome to the Narrative Podcast. This is a platform and a safe space for our superstar athletes and personalities to talk about the challenges, the vibes, and the experiences that make them the people that they are. We talk about anything and everything sports, but most of all, we have a good time. Now, today's podcast guest, I've wanted to have him come on the show for a while because of a recent victory of his. Now, stick around and you figure out what that went Exactly. But ladies and gentlemen, Kenya's own Mark Ochieno. Mark, welcome to the Narrative Podcast. Oh, thank you. It's such an honor to have you here. Such an honor for me too. Uh, now, the, one of the most fascinating sports stories I've ever heard in mm -hmm. my entire athletic career mm -hmm. was the story about, um, correct, I don't know if he's, how to pronounce his name exactly, but there's this Ugandan athlete. Mm -hmm. Who gave you spikes yes. to compete? Mm. Like, like my bro even came to that story. He's like, wow! <laughs> Imagine could I say he didn't have shoes, he ran, and he qualified for the Olympics. So mm. actually, when I was um, doing research on you, I was like, oh my gosh, mm. it's him! So I want to know that story, mm -hmm. and I want to know it with all the details. All the details. Yes. Well, funny enough, I met I met Tassis, I think. At Kasarani, he's a very good friend of mine, and every time I do have a meet in Uganda, he's like, "You guy, just come, I'll host you." So there was this one time, I think last, trying to qualify for the Olympics, he hosted me in Uganda because there was a meet there. And funny enough about the spike is that I still run with that same spike that I had before, because I had one spike um, that I've been running with it um, all the meet, especially the year of 2021. Yeah. So it was stoned. And um, the spike I got it in I think 2019, yeah, because 2020 we didn't have any races. Right. So and when you when you run with the spikes, like mm -hmm. do they get worn ukochini? Not even down, um, just somewhere at the toe. Okay. Yeah. So when I'm running, you can just see my toe. <laughs> <laughs> out yeah and i still have a photo of it really yes you have to send that to me i will <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it was funny enough when i was heading to the olympics while we were, i came i came from switzerland that weekend because hey, my wife was like i was running and i was kind of feeling pain and she was like there's something wrong i think in how much it just clicked like it's the in, shoes. yeah it's the shoes like you need to change shoes and you know how men how tough we are we are like yeah uh, no, I don't think yeah. it's the shoes. I don't think it's the shoes. Everything is just okay. The shoes, it's okay. And the shoe that I had, it was white and I had a blue shoe. So funny enough, I had to remove the sole of the blue shoe wow. and switch. <laughs> so I'm like wow. still now to consider myself that I have a spike. Yeah. Yeah, but that day, funny enough, funny, um, Tassis was around. So my wife went and talked to, her, to him and he was like, do you have another pair? Tassis was like, yeah, I do have another pair. So he washed it, then sent it to Dandrozi back at home. Wow. Before, the day before the trials. The day before the trials. Yes. And then you go into the trials and you qualify for the yes. Olympics. <laughs> that that is like that is so unheard of. Mm -hmm. You know, like that level of generosity. Yeah. And him helping you out, and yet he's like your competitor. In fact, you dedicated that um, that race to him, right? Yes. And he's a very good guy. And um, actually, funny enough, he sometimes he all, he, he at, th at that time he called and he was like. There's some progress that he was going through in terms of um, going to university mm -hmm. and he was like do i go pro or do i do university right. so i'm really happy that he went to oregon i'm mm -hmm. uh, not oregon i'm alabama oh he went to alabama state yeah, he went to alabama state wow. so right now he's based there yeah yeah the guy's flourishing he's running well wow. <laughs> and he's growing oh god bless him god big shout out big shout out to tarsis yeah that's awesome yeah 
Um, now, you have said that you're 2017, I mean, you have participated in very many meets, yeah. traveled to many countries, mm -hmm. but the language you used for your 2017 uh, World Championships in London mm -hmm. is you said it was mind-blowing. Yes. Now, I want to know, like, <laughs> what made it mind-blowing, mm -hmm. and I feel like there was a shift in your mentality from there. Mm -hmm. So, what was that shift? Where, did, where were you before, and what, where did you go to? Um, before, if I can remember correctly, in 2017, I'm trying to back to yeah, back to yeah, the events, I, but mainly wanted to qualify for the world championship because it was my first stepping stone, at least to reach the world champion. I've been into all African games, I've been into Africa, and I'm like, I'm I'm just sticking the box. I've been to I think Bahamas World Relays, and I'm like, now we need for a start at least. Now we need world championships. Oh, um, my travel. Yes. <laughs> wow. 2016 we missed um, Rio. Yeah. Yeah, we, we missed Rio. And um, I'm like, it's okay, at least 2017, this was I can remember um, that year I actually rededicated my life to Christ. Awesome. So things were just flowing, things were just flowing, and I got baptized again, and a few weeks it was nationals. Now, funny enough, there was no electronic timing like just being displayed, but the times were being announced somewhere on top. So I qualified with 100, no, not even 100, with 200. So I didn't know that I qualified. So now they were like, hey, there's this guy that has qualified for 200 and I was mentioned because I was the first guy. I was like, okay, at least now I can see a breakthrough. And then later on, because with 100 meters, I actually missed with 0 0.12. Wow. So our federation actually sent a message to Wild Athletics and, and they were like, oh, we have a guy who's close to the time. Can we consider him? They were like, yeah, sure, just bring him. And I qualified with 100, so I doubled my event. And it was so fascinating actually to be in the world championship because now I'm like, I'm getting to meet now the icons of this track and field, right. Bold, Gatlin. And what was more touching is that that was the year I believe Bold was retiring, mm -hmm. it was his last race, and I actually witnessed him run right. the finals. Yes. And it was mind blowing. You know, seeing them on TV, yeah, it's, it's, one uh, thing. It's, it's one thing, but now seeing them live, Fascinating. Did you get a picture? Did you get an autograph? Did you at least shake well, hands? Uh, I didn't shake hands because it was pretty intense. Yeah. It was pretty intense. But the one time that I remember just talking to him, actually it was funny, we were having a chat at a dustbin. <laughs> 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 it was in 2015 uh -huh. um, in World Relays. Because yeah. I actually timed him, timed him while he was leaving because mm -hmm. everyone was all over of him. Of course. Yeah. He's so a legend. He's a legend. So I had to follow him, then be like, let me have a chat. Because yeah. I had to speak to his guard. So yeah. his guard was like, you can have a chat. So we were just one on one. Yeah. And I was lost of words, so I didn't say anything. I didn't say much. But he signed my best. Oh, <laughs> lovely. 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 Yes. I mean, I feel, you know, I, I, I had um, Freddie on the podcast a few episodes ago. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about, I think, his, uh, I can't remember what race it was, but he was talking about how, like, his, his heroes, the people he looks up to, mm -hmm. were just there passing each other. I think it was, was it the Olympics? I can't remember what race it was. And for him, it was just, he had to be focused. Mm -hmm. He had to be like, listen. I'm a sprinter, they're a sprinter right now, it's a level platform, I'm mm -hmm. not gonna, you know, mm -hmm. like, oh my god, oh, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I feel like it. you have to kind of get your head into the game in that way, mm -hmm. especially when it's comp um, competition Com time, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so um, respect to you for that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you had a coach called uh, Owen Anderson. Yes. Is he still your coach? No. Um, actually, I think... To the, every every year we have to sit down with my wife and I just to review how the year goes because I've been with Owen I think for two years if I'm not wrong yeah yeah so we just have, we sat down with my wife and we were like mm, I think we need a change I think we need a change and funny enough now the coach that I'm with he texted me via Instagram so he was just like hey my name is so and so my name is um Andrew Cock I'm a coach in South Africa I teach young guys in university so this is what I do, this and this. I'm like, oh, okay, that's nice. So I told him my goals. Because at that time, I think we were trying to call it, not, not even trying to, it was off season before the year of Olympics. That mm -hmm. was in end of 2020. Yeah, so we, we just started chatting slowly by slowly. And in my heart, I was like, we need a new coach as fast as possible. And he sent me one of his program with the high schoolers. And I told my wife, like, I think this is the guy. I think this is the guy. So my wife was like, mm, I, I, I'm not sure about that, but let's wait and see. So I told, I, I was like, you know what, let me make a call with him. So we had a um, WhatsApp call just to get to link up and just get to know each other. I met him, 
so the wife and at least now from there on we were like um since i was transitioning moving from my previous coach which I went, i'm looking for a coach and i'm like i would like it to be you yeah. and he was like okay for sure that clear out on the other end then you can start mm -hmm. i was like okay no problem so that's how i came to know that's how we came to start with coach so he, he's been your coach since 20 yes end of 2020 end of 2020 yes now, what I, find, I find it so interesting that... Mm -hmm. Now, he's based in South Africa, right? Yes, he's based in South and Africa. And Coach Owen was based in the States. Yes, Michigan. I find it so interesting that your coach is remote. Mm -hmm. um, and for, for me, playing basketball, mm -hmm. if our coach is remote, <laughs> oh, you think we're going to show up? Uh, oh my gosh, it'll be scratch every single day. <laughs> like, what practice plan? Yeah. I mean, um, so, but I think it was mm -hmm. so interesting that he's remote. And, mm -hmm. and for me, like... What did that training schedule look like? Like, is it is it video calls all the time? It, does he send you a, like a plan mm -hmm. and then you have to follow it? Is there someone here who mm -hmm. hold, held you accountable? Mm -hmm. um, well, the good thing is that I'm curious at some point. Like, I do want to learn. That's how I throw myself. Like, I do want to learn how track and field work, how a program works. Um, how do somebody get, like, how do you feel the intensity of a workout and things like that. So now when... I've been doing online coaching for the past five years now, if I'm not wrong. So how we normally do is that they send the program. We have to do a video call, talk through it. And if there are things which I'm familiar with, I'm like, I'm familiar with that. If there are some which I'm not, I ask, like, I'm not sure about this. So most of, most of our coaching has been via video call, video right. call sorry, yeah. Right. But I've been sending him the times, how I'm progressing, how I'm doing, and oh, yeah, and, and yeah. And, but then now, how does, how does like, because of course you have to be timed, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then, of course, there's kind of like live mm -hmm. correcting your technique. Mm -hmm. Like you run a sprint, and then he's like, no, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> but, but raise your legs yeah. higher or mm -hmm. make your back straighter. Mm -hmm. So like, how do you guys have those kind of back and forth corrections? Well, we do normally take videos. Sometimes he asks for videos so that you can correct um, my technique. And sometimes I also go back and I also check and if I see things that I need to correct I go also do my research and I'll send him so that I also see his point of view what I need to correct mm. yeah but personally I would love to either go to South Africa and train with him or him to come here yeah. to train with us that's kind of the ideal situation yeah that's kind of the ideal situation it was kind of reminding me of um Julius Yego mm -hmm. remember how like he the taught YouTube. him yeah he yes. taught himself how to do the javelin <laughs> throw from yes. from YouTube mm -hmm. how do you where does that level of discipline come from? Like to be able to mm -hmm. be dedicated, to mm -hmm. show up daily, to mm -hmm. perform? Number one thing is that it's your, it's, it's your it's job. Mm -hmm. That's number one thing I know about. It's, uh, it's career. And I'm like, if, if I don't push myself to work, right. there's nothing else that I can go do. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I have to wake up every morning and see it as it's like an eight to five job. Go do my work, then come back home. Yeah. Yeah. So, but again, I would say sometimes it's challenging. There are days we it's boring. Mm -hmm. There are days which you are motivated. There are days which you are like, you have to keep thinking of the end goal of what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now the boring days, how do you push through? Um, the boring days, let me be honest, it's just um, you just you just want to finish and go home. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun part. I'm like, today I'm like I'm out. I'm tired, but I just want to finish and go home. But the next day, yeah. A fresh start. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, despite like um, the hurdles, right? Mm -hmm. um, the obvious one is being the the doping ban. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to train consistently? And I'll ask you. Mm -hmm. The question is two faceted. Mm -hmm. Train consistently physically, mm -hmm. but I'm also curious to know your mental state mm -hmm. to train, right? Because. Mm -hmm you are not able to compete in events mm -hmm. so you know that the next event you're going to compete in is maybe one year two, year. two years down mm -hmm. the line like for me as a as a basketball player mm -hmm. when i know there's no game that weekend <laughs> i'm just like man uh, you know like my motivation level goes low because the mm -hmm. reason i'm training mm -hmm. and perfecting my skills is ultimately for the game mm -hmm. or ultimately for the tournament mm -hmm. so here you have a situation where you have um this ban mm -hmm. But you can't just let loose because you lose you know, all yeah. gains that you've been able to get. Mm. So have you been able to train consistently um, physically? Mm -hmm. Or did you have to give yourself some mental health days to mm -hmm. just get into a positive mindset? Mm -hmm. um, and how did you rise above that? Well, I would say 
especially now when the results came and now we were just trying to think the way forward because I was like next year we have um, last, year, last year was Commonwealth and what African Games so in my mind and in my heart I was like I'm just doing this by faith so if I wake up and go for training I'll be like um, I'm doing this because maybe it's going to end in the next two months in the next so I've been physically I've been training the whole season like it's a normal season but mentally also it's challenging yeah. it's challenging because you're not seeing the end goal you're like I'm not seeing the end results in terms of like is it ending anytime soon the case is in a shindeki prolonged yeah. like it's just getting longer and longer so I'm like do I give up do I proceed but I'm like if I stop now and then start getting fat <laughs> exactly <laughs> yes, yeah. then getting fat I'm like no I have to keep pushing myself it's like the season is ending but as the as time goes at least the good thing is that I had close friends yeah. I had people who have been praying with me people who have been just telling me you know what this thing will come to an end mm. very time soon this thing will come to an end so that's one thing that at least I've been looking for and hoping for yeah yeah so that support system you, yeah the you, support system you've mentioned your wife a lot hi mm. wife <laughs> hey hi. <laughs> yeah. I know um it's so important to have a partner that is supporting you because no yes. one knows you better than ha huh. yes, yes. The person that the lives person with is. you yes. every single day mm -hmm. you know and if you if that person is not encouraging you mm -hmm. and lifting you i mean you know how it is with, with marriage right there's some True. days where you both lift each other there's some days one person will lift the other one more yeah there's some days where the other person lift the other one more mm -hmm. and i know in a previous interview you said that mm -hmm. um it it uh bothered you that um she had to stop her track dreams so that she could uh yeah. pursue a professional career and support mm -hmm. the family yeah tell us a little bit about that dynamic i mean you've said your wife so many times <laughs> let's talk about her right <laughs> yes. let's, let's let's talk about your wife mm -hmm. um how did you guys meet uh how long have you guys been married and mm -hmm. like what has her support meant to you um well it's a, it's a good story because we, we met at the track actually uh, that was back in 2015. You know? now pause yes fun fact for for the guys <laughs> at home so Steph apparently played against me in a basketball tournament back in 2013 when we were in uh, Morocco. Uh, I was playing for Eagle Wings and that was the Africa Club oh. Championships. Yeah. And we were the only two Kenyan teams yeah. that went. <laughs> and we had a serious rivalry. <laughs> like USA, you had just beat us here in Kenya at home. And we were like, there's no way we're going to a foreign country to be beaten by these kids again. Mm -hmm. So that game, Vikwamoto, mm -hmm. was super, super hot. Ooh. But I didn't realize that Steph mm -hmm. was actually a part of that team. So I'm really sorry, Steph. <laughs> but uh, cool. we're cool, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, back to your story, how you guys met. Um, actually, we met in 2015, that was around October, that was during off-season. Now we are looking forward to 20, the season for 2016 in Rio. Um, Steph dropped USIU from basketball, so she came to do track. Now that's where we met. We met in Pangani, and she was kind of, she, not even kind of, she was cute at that time. <laughs> even now she is, still. She's <laughs> cute, eh? Yes, she's cute and she's growing beautiful every day. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we, we, we were good friends. I would say we were good friends. And we just started being, bringing up stories, just getting to know each other. Because I was from a previous relationship and I was like, God, me, I'm done. Yeah. I don't need any relationship now, I'm focused. Mm -hmm. But... And God she, was like, she can't. Yes, yeah, she was like, he's another one. one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is. So we were good friends and she used to serve at Nairobi Lighthouse. I was in Seaton Parklands. So she invited me once in her church. And um, at that time, I remember I was trying to transition in a lot of things, especially I was looking for spiritual growth. Um, from my church and I was like now she invited me to lighthouse and that day and I was like I think I, I'll, I'll shift I shift from my church to this church mm -hmm. not because of her but because I was looking for spiritual growth and that's how we became friends she in, introduced me to her pastor to her fellow friends and um, I get to know her pretty much at the church and how she serves and wh for who she is right yeah and okay. that's what I fell in love with. That's what you fell in love with. Yes. And so now, um, during the dark times, mm -hmm. um, what kind of support system has she been to you? Ooh, I could say everything. I would say everything. She's a prayer warrior and um, all these things that we've been going through together, we've been going through together with her. And the good thing is that 
during the tough times that's where that's the critical part that we need each other and um there are times where she'll be like you know what let's go for it today and there are days where now i'm like the other way around i'm like i'm, I'm the one who's encouraging her now yeah. we need to move forward and look look um the brighter future and to be honest um when i failed the test in tokyo she felt she she felt like she failed the test with me to get like we felt right. we, yeah we failed the test together mm. and it hurt her as much as it hurt me right yeah so that's the good thing wow well, mm. well, okay so um i talked about a big victory for you mm -hmm. uh basically um i believe snow legal your legal representatives mm -hmm. were able to prove that you did not intentionally take mm. a prohibited uh substance mm. and the key word here mm. is intention yes and i feel like it's that intention that where a lot of because i mean the kenya right now we're de dealing with the whole doping situation situation right mm. like even um i think the head of athletics in the world came mm -hmm. and was talking to kenya mm -hmm. um but I feel like there are a lot of athletes who do not intentionally take yeah. these substances. Mm -hmm. So you bought a supplement mm -hmm. innocently. Mm -hmm. um, there's a substance in there that is prohibited. You don't know. You take it. Mm -hmm. It's a whole issue. Mm -hmm. Is that a situation that happens to a lot of Kenyan athletes, you'd say? Well, I believe so, but it all comes down to not proving yourself. Yeah. Because... Now for us now, when we came to realize that this was a contamination case, I'm like, so how many people behind us have yeah. been having contamination case and yet they're not proving it? Because for us, I would say it's very expensive. It's very expensive, especially to test for supplements, especially that you've been using. And it takes a lot of self-discipline to be diligent with um, what you've been using, what you've been taking, all the test results that you have and how you've been keeping them. So I would say that this is something that I believe we can overcome and and i'm praying that what happened to mine it's like an open door for the rest of the other athletes yeah mm. yeah so i guess it's it's, an, it's a situation of um one knowledge mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um two having the right representation because yes. like i said there are other guys who have had these accusations mm -hmm. um, put to them and then they don't have the right knowledge don't have the right support so yeah. now their career ends like that yeah um but I feel like it's not, it's, the whole situation is not so simplistic. Mm -hmm. As in, this one is accused of doping. Mm -hmm. He's a bad person. He's a bad athlete. How mm -hmm. could he? And you see, for us on the outside, that's, where, that's the conclusion we jump to instantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I feel like there's a lot of backstory. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Sarah Ochoada, I really love her um, mm -hmm. Instagram platform because she kind of lays it out very, yeah. very clearly, mm -hmm. like the different reasons why someone could be caught up in some kind of, in a doping ban. Mm -hmm. So um, that was very helpful. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, your situation, um, mm -hmm. I'm really glad you mentioned God. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like life has thrown some proper Ooh, stones. stones at you. Not those boulders. You know, <laughs> just like this. Just throwing them on top of you like this. Yeah. And I feel like mm -hmm. if you didn't have that um, belief mm -hmm. and that um, spiritual support mm -hmm. and God holding you up, mm -hmm. I feel like it would it would make anyone crumble because mm. first of all there's COVID, mm -hmm. so the sporting world shuts down, right? Yes. Then we're just about to get back into it, and then you're hit with this, uh, mm -hmm. you know, doping thing, mm -hmm. um, and that now shuts off your career. So we're talking mm -hmm. about a break of what, maybe three, two to three years, mm -hmm. where you're not able to compete. Could compete, yeah. So that, of course, is major loss. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in, when it comes to athletes, especially sprinting, mm -hmm. age is a huge factor. Yeah. You know? Mm. Um, but you've also talked about other personal loss. Like, what, what did you lose or what have you lost through this period? Well, I would say financially, yeah. it was draining for both of us. Because every time like, we enter a meet or every time we qualify for an event, we are like, at least there's an X amount that you're going to get to either um, invest for the next and trying to look for deals sometimes and I would say like mostly and then again time yeah. we lost a lot of time because I'm like I'm just hoping that these things that this thing will end anytime soon so that at least we get back to our feet and try and um, earn some money because now this is since it's our career now this is now where we are earning because yeah. I know track and field it has a lot of money mm. it has money and it's just a matter of it's just connection 
and um, people coming in and helping you out. Right, mm. right. What do you mean by connections? Like just knowing the right people? Yes, yeah, just knowing the right people and brands, just people coming in and you know, well, we shall be like, you know, I know what you're going through, but I know you have potential. Mm. He is this or we are here with you all the way till you retire. Let's let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now I know that uh, Safaricom offers to give you, I think, one million shillings. Yes. Um, just to boost your career and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Did they still follow through with that after you were hit with a ban? Yes, they did. They did. Yeah, they did. Uh, big shout out to Safaricom. <laughs> we see you. We appreciate you. We acknowledge yeah. you. That's actually really. Because you see, a lot of companies mm -hmm. would um, pull out because they'd be like, oh, no, this affects our brand negatively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's actually impressive that they stuck with it. Yeah, let me um, the one thing that I love about them is that they are so professional. And um, especially when they failed the test, they didn't withdraw. They, didn't, they had the right to be like, you know what, we're not giving you this money. In yeah. fact, the money came after the results came. Wow. Yeah, it came like somewhere around October. So that's, that's the money that helped us to prove this case. Mm. And I believe God knew that we needed this amount to work on this situation. And the good thing is that they're still following through and they were like, in fact, especially I remember that time they were like, we don't know who to believe. Do we believe you? Do we believe AIU? But they were like, let's wait for the final decision mm -hmm. and let's see. Mm -hmm. So we were like, okay, let, we'll continue doing an investigation, but we'll keep you in the loop with what's going on. Yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of companies don't do that due diligence. No. For them, it's just about X's and O's, checks and figures. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. how is this gonna make us lose money? Mm -hmm. We think it might. Or we need to make them look bad. Exactly. Yeah. Cancel it. Mm -hmm. So that's actually really, I mean, Firecom is very involved in very many sports activities. Uh, yes, they are. And I really wish that more companies would um, mm -hmm. follow, would borrow a leaf from, from, from that book and just really invest in, in athletes. Mm -hmm. um, and while I'm on that topic, mm -hmm. uh, you said before that. Um, and I was reading up on you, that it's hard to get sponsorship as a Kenyan who chooses the mm -hmm. distance that you've chosen, mm -hmm. which is the 100 meter, mm -hmm. um, because um, Kenyans are, more, are known more for long, long distance, distance, right? Yeah. So my question to you mm -hmm. is, do you think that maybe it's, it's more of a packaging issue? In terms of, mm -hmm. so people are going the safe way. Mm -hmm. Oh, we know that this athlete is gonna win the Boston Marathon mm -hmm. and this and that marathon mm. but if you were packaged in a way where um, your brand was managed in a way where it is attractive to sponsors mm -hmm. people are not just seeing you as mark someone who is happens to run the hundred meters mm -hmm. but they're hearing your story mm -hmm. you're aligning yourself with brands that fit into that story mm -hmm. you're inspiring people mm -hmm. because of that mm -hmm. that might bring in more sponsors um, I believe so because my aim in this sport was to represent the country, especially in 100, because I saw those, that gap. Because we normally had guys from 400 going yeah. all the way back. So I was like, there's that gap between 100 and 200, there's no one there. So me entering this sport was like, we want to take sprints into a global um, sport and just people know that, oh, we do have sprinters. But at that time when sprints were starting to come up, it was kind of being shut down. Every time it comes up, it's being shut down. So now when guys started running fast, they'll be like, oh, so we do have guys who are running fast. So that was my aim. And now since you've mentioned the story, now I'm seeing it in a different yeah. perspective. I'm like, now the story is even, it's more important yes. than you running fast. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, um, I, I talk a lot about this. Uh, it's the, in the States, is something called NIL. Mm -hmm. It's name, image, and likeness, and it's, mm -hmm. it's for college students, so mm -hmm. now like your mm -hmm. friend uh, Tarsis, mm -hmm. um, how they can now get deals and how get money off mm -hmm. of their name, image, True. and likeness. Mm -hmm. And do you know that mm -hmm. n the best or the most paid NIL deals don't necessarily go towards the people who are the biggest elite athletes? Mm -hmm. Like, it's mm -hmm. not about who is the best player True. or the best in their sports yeah. discipline. Mm -hmm. It's about how you package them True. and how you make them sellable mm -hmm. and attractive um, to sponsors. Mm -hmm. So I think that you even choosing the 100 meters, even though Kenyans are not known for sprints, yeah. I don't think that should be a crutch, not a crutch, but a handicap for you. That's so true. I think that you were an elite athlete. Mm -hmm. You have an amazing story about, you know, bouncing back, mm -hmm. about believing in yourself. 
and now if a brand that is also looking that that their vision and their image is in that direction mm. partner up partner up with you yeah true. you know yeah you're an inspiration to to the next generation you're an inspiration to people who want to become uh sprinters in kenya not just mm. in kenya but across yeah. africa yeah so don't 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 think that you won't get those chances <laughs> you will definitely get those chances yeah thank you now i wanted to ask you mm -hmm. um you know, you've you've lived three lifetimes. I feel in the last three four years. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were to talk to your younger self, mm -hmm. let's say in twenty nineteen, before all the craziness <laughs> began, uh, right? Uh -huh. What would you tell yourself? Oh, I tell myself a lot of things. <laughs> but, um, I want to hear them. I will say the future is bright. Mm -hmm. Just know that you'll get better and um, doubt your doubts, number one, and um, things will get much easier as you go. The road is challenging and um, just persevere with the Lord, but just know everything is under control. Mm. Mm. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. When you're in the dark times, you feel like this is it. This is it. It'll never when change. Done. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there's somebody up there who has the pen and is writing your story. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's mm. really awesome. So. 2023, mm -hmm. the ban is being lifted. Mm -hmm. You're back on the track. Yeah. What What are you looking to achieve this year? Um, where should we find you if we want to watch your your track <laughs> meets? You know. Well, um, I'm coming back in July, mm -hmm. so I would say nothing is impossible with God. Cause first things first. I'm just waiting for that July 31st. I don't know if I'll celebrate. I don't know if I'll host a bath. I'm might, not even a bath, just a party. You, I'll send you guys a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm just looking forward to just being released and just to interact with people. Yeah. Because that's one thing that I'm being restricted for at this time. So I'm just looking forward to that day. And then now going forward, um, Everything is under God's hands. Mm -hmm. Yes, because mm -hmm. I, I want to. Of course, I want to qualify for next year's Olympics, and I just want to have fun once again. Yeah. 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 Most important is fun. Yeah, most important. Fun. Yeah. yeah you, know, you can't be strict with yourself, yeah. especially with athletics. Yeah. So it's just a matter of entering and enjoying yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. So, Mark, that was my last question. First of all. Yeah. So, see panic. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> But I think my major um, takeaway from this interview is that you are so much more mm -hmm. than this doping ban story. I know mm -hmm. that a lot of people um, focus on that, mm -hmm. but I think it's an honor for me to have given you a platform to um, you know, set the record straight mm -hmm. and also to talk about such what a resilient and amazing athlete you are. So mm -hmm. thank you so very much. Oh, you're welcome. And um, you have a fan in me. Oh, thank I'll you. I'll be making sure that uh, I'll be like, yeah, I know him. <laughs> We're in the same room together. Mm -hmm. um, I wish you all the best in uh, the 2023 season. Oh, and I'm really you. hoping that you do make it to the, the Olympics. Oh, thank you. Amen. Listen, guys, if you've not hit the subscribe button, what are you waiting for? This podcast is about giving our African athletes a real platform to express themselves and to set the record straight, as you've seen. So you definitely don't want to miss out on the next episode, right? If you liked what you saw here, hit the like button. And if you loved it, subscribe. That's it from us right here. See you next time. <laughs>